I'll be reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. And so we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, at training to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Happy here and blessed, but kind of sick of my own cooking. If that's the worst I have to say, I'm in good shape. I, Having read this scripture, it said many things to me, but the, the thing that it said most to me was that God gave us a purpose. He gave us a plan, and he, and he told us how to live our lives, and that's so important. You can all remember when you were younger and maybe you couldn't find your way in life. You weren't sure what your earthly purpose was, what, what job you were going to have, where are you going to fit in, would you get married, would you have children, what would happen. It was stressful. And it's even more stressful not to know what your spiritual purpose is. If we didn't know that, but we do know that. He told us that through this scripture. And that's why I think it's such a wonderful gift. And it, it just proved to me even further that we have such a God full of love that he shows it in so many ways. And he showed it this way. I think of all the times I've seen uh, scripture prove to me just how, how much we're loved. And it, it's, it's a powerful love that you just can't fathom. And when you think about it, it brings tears to your eyes. You've never felt a love like that, nor able to give a love like that. But he is and does all the time, and he does it in the Bible. He shows it in the Bible. And uh, one of the things I think about a lot during communion is, you know, when Christ was to be crucified during his last supper, that Passover supper, there are a million things that he could have been thinking about. He knew all the horrors that were going to happen to him very shortly. And he didn't worry about himself. He worried about us. He told us what he was going to do and how he was going to save us. And he had the, the Last Supper for our benefit so that we'd know and his disciples would know and remember him and be saved and have an everlasting life. To be able to do that at that point in his life, it's just every communion I think about that. It's amazing. And you may ask me how I know that he loves us so much. I have to relay a little story to you about my personal situation. And I know how much he loves me. And he loves you the same way. Less than a year after Mary passed, uh, I heard that Nick, uh, who is... Uh, daughter Elizabeth's boyfriend was trying to get a hold of me and we just hadn't been able to hook up. Well, one day I was working from home and this was previous COVID-19. So I rarely worked at home at that point in time. I liked going into the office. It was less distractions and I was normally there. But this particular day, I think my boss told me to stay home. She wanted me to work on something that was important and not be distracted by anything. So I stayed home. So it was rare that I was home. 
but I'm sitting there, my, my cell phone rings, and uh, it was Nick, Elizabeth's boyfriend, and we talked a little bit, and then he said, you know, I've asked uh, Elizabeth's father this, and I, I'd like to ask you as well, I'd like your blessing for us to get married. Well, I wasn't extremely touched and moved by it all. I, I was really impressed. Uh, I, it was a blessing to hear that. He was very, he, he's a nice guy. He would do something like that. But I said to him, obviously, you, you have my blessing. You're, you're a wonderful person. You're a good Christian. Um, you two make a good couple. And then he proceeded to tell me, he said, you know, if Mary were alive, I certainly would ask her the same thing. And I said, well, I'll tell you what she would say. She would have given you her blessing. She thought the world of you. And if she were here, she would be very happy now. So we said our goodbyes and I hung up the phone. And I had my cell phone. I was speaking on the cell phone, but we do have a landline in the house. So just to tell you that in advance. So I looked down at my phone and I saw that I had missed a call. And when I looked down, and saw who I had missed it from, it really kind of took my breath away. It said, Mary Hill tried to call you. <laughs> and um, I didn't know what that meant at first, but I went over in the other room where the landline was and I thought, I hit the, I hit the, the button to call the number that had called me. And that phone in front of me in the family room rang. Now there is no way. <laughs> Anybody used that phone to call me. So I wasn't sure what it all meant, but I usually take a walk in the evening with the dog and God spoke to me. And this is my opinion, and it's just that. But my opinion is that once you go to heaven, I don't think you have any contact with earth. You can't because it's paradise. And if you knew what was going on down here, it wouldn't be paradise anymore. There's too much trouble, heartache loved ones in your lives. It's just not the type of thing there would be any contact. So I don't think it was Mary speaking to me. And I found that out to be true on my walk because God said to me, this is Mary's way of letting you know that she approves of the situation. She approves of your, of your response to it. And the thing that it really said to me, and he told me, she is here with me. And you knew that all along. This is, this is a validation of your faith. And aside from salvation, that is one of the best gifts I've ever had. I'll never forget it. And I'm so thankful for it. So, in the worst of times, he was there for me. And he's there for everyone. And he's there for you. And he's there for us right now. And he'll get us through this, I have no doubt. So please feel protected and loved and cared for and blessed. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.